What's up guys? Today we're gonna be building a new Windows XP retro gaming PC. So let's just get right into it guys. We're gonna go over the hardware first, then we're just gonna do a time lapse build of the thing, test it out, install Windows XP on it, and then we can be on our merry little way. So let's get right into it guys. We have this ASRock A785 GM LE AM3 slash AM3 Plus motherboard. And uh, probably wondering what components we're gonna put on this. So, we have two 2 gigabyte sticks of crucial, I think this is 800 megahertz, DDR2 memory. So let's just stick these right in. Let's... We have a, an AMD, I believe this is a, an AMD Athlon 64X2 4000 plus, something like that. Uh, it's an AM2 CPU which I'm a bit scared might not work, but it is AM2 plus motherboard as well. So to install the CPU, what you gotta do is open up the socket with this arm, find the little orange, the golden triangle on the corner of the CPU, you rotate it so that it aligns with the golden tri the triangle on the motherboard, which in my case is right here. So it'll be sitting in the socket just like that. We just got the stock AMD, I think this is an AMD A-series FM2 or 3 stock cooler, which should work on this motherboard in theory. I think it uses the same mounting method. As long as I have the back plate and the little brackets, as well as the little tank in the fan, we should be good. So, let's take this thing off of the back plate, put the back plate on the board, and install the cooler. <laughs> It's time to move on to video card, which is a G a, an EVGA GeForce 9800 GTX Plus with 512 megabytes of DDR3 memory. It uses PCIe 2.0, which I'm pretty sure that this motherboard maxes out at. It is SOI ready, although it is only a single graphics card. I picked this thing up for three dollars. Actually, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. We have to put this stuff into the case first before we can install anything else. So that brings us to the next topic. I'm saying this brings us to the case. This case is of completely unknown origin. It has a temperature display here, USB. It does not have a core to do all this. It is powered, it's not powered by ASUS anymore. Um, both systems would have been true for the previous XP machines in the world, which I believe is now dead. I don't know what the hell happened to it. It's just not working well anymore at all anymore. So it has a USB 2.0 high speed um, floppy drive sized card reader in it. I'm really just not feeling this case. But I guess we're gonna have to use this, because I don't feel like giving it, digging out the sleep, the old sleeper PC case. At least for now, that's what it is. This is what we're gonna have to stick with. It has two USB 2.0 ports on the front, which do work. It has, I think this is, it did, it used to have blue, I mean, these are kind of like neon lights on the side here, but the connector's been spliced, chopped off, and I don't quite know how to wire them up. And this is two audio ports. This is microphone in and headphone out, both of which do not have the cable, which is an audio, HD audio, two HD audio cable. Just plugs straight into the back of this little daughter board here, but it's a double-sided cable. I don't have it. It didn't come with it. I got this case for, I think, a dollar? Yeah, this case was a dollar. I think it's a dollar well spent. Let's just take off the side cover here, which you can see has a fan on it, which came with it. One of these, I got two cases, both each for a dollar. And uh, they both came with fans and they both have temperature LEDs. And they both have quite a lot of room for hard drives, I gotta say. 
The other one doesn't have USB or audio. This one has USB, but it's missing the audio connector. So that kind of sucks, but it's really cool. Let's start this. This thing has a floppy drive and a card reader. It's not just a floppy drive bay with card readers in it. It's literally a floppy drive with a card reader attached to it. You see it? It's a floppy drive down here and a card reader up here. I hope that that works. I could actually put that into the sleeper PC case because this, this is actually the right color scheme for that. And that would be really, really cool to have that. I've been looking for one of these for a while. Um, and I got one for a dollar with a case with basically everything. I've used this case before, so I know that it works. So that's cool. So let's install the stuff into it. So we're going to be installing into the case is the power supply, which is a Logisys 550 watt power supply. It's uh, quite a nice power supply. It's just quite loud as well. I don't quite like. I don't like that at all, and I doubt that it's actually rated at 550 watts because it does not. It feels really like that's not honest at all because the 500 watt ASUS that came with the computer I got the other day actually. It's heavier and it's 50 watts less. It's kind of iffy and kind of suspicious, but, but we're gonna install that first, so we're gonna time lapse that as much as you guys probably wanna watch me struggle with this. Thing. I completely stripped out, so I can only put in two screws, which is fine. Um, just a little bit. Wow. Um. One of these actually come loose right now. What the hell? Shit, that's also stripped. Okay. Well, it'll have to do because. I don't have any more screws, so whatever. Um, so moving on, we're gonna install the motherboard. Time lapse this as well. Sorry about that, guys, but it's the way it has to be. It's too much editing work. <laughs> the motherboard now uh, I was having some trouble because the standoffs are labeled incorrectly I don't know what C stands for but C is apparently MATX and M is not MATX I have no clue what it is <laughs> so whatever let's install the motherboard now <laughs> because this is going to be a huge thing. We're going to be talking about this graphics card, which is a... An EVGA 9800 GTX Plus, as mentioned earlier, it's PCIe 2.0, the max of this motherboard supports, I believe, 512 megabytes of DDR3 memory, and it's non-SLI. It says on the box that requires two six-pin uh, PCI power connectors. It only, it only requires one, that's a lie. So we're going to put this inside the slot. And then we're going to install the rest of the components. So then we're going to wrap it up. Stay tuned. And there we go. Everything is in, in the case. Everything's ready to go, basically. So that leads us to our next part, which is light card, which I bought off of eBay. Very luckily, I found this thing on eBay for like $5.60, I think. 
and it's a Packard, it's in this Chinese ass box, but it, in the pictures I saw this, it says Packard Bell 80211BGN, and I was like, that's actually a pretty good USB dongle, is a 300 megabit per second dongle, and it was advertised as new, although it looks heavily used, so I'm not sure what's up with that. So we have the driver CD, which supports Win 2000, XP Vista, Windows 7, Mac OS Linux. Cool. AW-NU120. So we have this. We're just gonna get installed into the computer once we're finished. So let's button it up, and I'll be back. And it's complete. I put in a 160 gigabyte, 50 gigabyte blue SATA. And we should be rolling now, so I'm gonna go grab a monitor and start things. I'll be back to you. I completely forgot that this could be a possibility, but I may have put in the USB connectors in upside down. So let me fix those. So guys, I think that's about all I'm gonna do today. Oh, wait, never mind. I just found my keyboard adapter, so we can do a little bit more here. Through the waves cut through me, hypnotized by the sounds I'm breathing in. Hold tight, hold tight, chemicals collide. Hold tight, hold tight, hold tight. But I'm gonna leave it there for today, because I, I really don't feel like doing anything right now.